This is part 17 of Angular CLI tutorial. Implementing routing in an Angular application involves many small steps. Angular CLI does a pretty good job in having some of these routing steps implemented out of the box just by using dash dash routing option. Before we discuss how we can use Angular CLI to generate some of these routing features, let's first set up routing manually so we have a better understanding of all the moving parts as far as implementing routing is concerned. Once we have a solid understanding of all these manual steps involved in setting up routing, we'll then use Angular CLI to generate these routing features. So at that point, we should be in a better place to understand what this Angular CLI tool is actually generating for us as far as routing is concerned. To speed things up, what I have done so far is generated a new Angular project using the Angular CLI. And here is the command to generate a new project ng new and the name of our project is employee management. So this project is generated and we also have all the npm packages installed successfully as you can see from the message right here. In addition to creating this project I also have created these three components right here. We have the home component, employees component, page not found component. Again I have generated these components using the angular CLI. So if we look at this project within Visual Studio Code, notice in addition to our root component, app component, we have all the three generated components right here, home component, employees component, and our page not found component. So at this point within our application, we have got four components. So now let's look at the steps involved in setting up routing. The first step is to set the base href in our application host page, which is usually index.html. This base href element tells the Angular router how to compose our navigation URLs. During development time, we usually set it to a single forward slash as you can see right here, which indicates the root of our application. If at this point you are not entirely sure about the purpose of this base href element, don't worry, we'll come back to this in just a bit. Now we don't have to implement this step manually because when we generated this new Angular project, Angular CLI has already implemented this step for us. So if we look at index.html page within Visual Studio Code, notice we already have the base href element right here. The next step is to import the router module into our application root module. This router module provided by Angular has all the routing features such as the router service and the common router directives like router link, router link active, router outlet, etc. We'll discuss what these directives are and their purpose in just a bit. But before that, first let's import the router module into our application root module, app module. Our app module is in this file app.module.ts. So first let's include the required import statement to import router module and we also need to include it within the imports array right here. So in addition to the browser module, let's also include our router module. Next, we need to configure the application routes. To configure routes, we are going to make use of this type, routes. This type is also present in the same Angular router package. So in addition to importing router module, let's also import routes. Now let's define our routes. To define our routes, we are creating a constant called app routes and the type of this constant is routes, the type that we have just imported from the Angular router package. And we know routes is an array of route objects. And at the moment within this array, as you can see, we've got four route objects. Now let's understand the purpose of each of these routes. Let's assume our application is running at this URL localhost colon 4200 and then in the address bar if the end user navigates to this path home. Now this path in the URL matches the path that we have right here home. That means in this case we want to display the home component view template to the user. So within the address bar if he navigates to home we want to display the home component view template. Similarly, if the user navigates to employees, now this matches with this route that we have right here. So here we have employees. In the address bar, we also have employees. So we display the employees component view template to the user. The third route that we have here is slightly different from the first two routes. This third route is called the redirect route. Notice the path here is set to an empty string. 
meaning if the end user did not provide any part of the client side URL, meaning he did not enter slash home or slash employees, the client side portion here is an empty path. So he is actually navigating to the root URL of our application. So in that case, redirect the user to the home route, meaning when an end user navigates to the root of the URL without any client side path, then display the home component view template to that user. Notice in the third route, we also have this path match property. And at the moment we have set it to full, meaning we want to do a full path match. The other possible value for this property is prefix. In a later video, we'll discuss the difference between the two. The last route that we have here is called the wildcard route. This route is used if the requested URL does not match any of the routes that we have already defined. For example, if we navigate to this URL slash ABC, this does not match with any of these first three routes that we have here. So in this case, the page not found component view template is used. Now in our root module file, that is app.module.ts, let's include these four routes. In the interest of time, I've already copied this code to the clipboard. So let's paste that code right here. The next thing that we need to do is let Angular Router know about these routes that we have right here. To do that, we are going to make use of the for root method of the router module. To this method, we pass this constant app routes, which contains our four routes. So let's do that quickly. So here on the router module, when I type dot and then for, notice we have got two methods here, for child and for root. We'll discuss the difference between these two methods and when to use one over the other in our upcoming videos. For now, let's use for root and then to that, let's pass this constant, which has all our four configured routes. Next, you need to specify where you want the routed components view templates to be displayed using the router outlet directive. In our case, we want the routed components view templates to be displayed in our root component, which is the app component. So if we look at the view template of our root component, we've got a lot of HTML auto-generated by the Angular CLI out of the box. I'm going to replace all this HTML with router outlet directive. At this point, we have everything that we need for routing to work in our application. So let's build and run our application. For that, I'm going to use this command ng serve dash dash open. Notice the URL in the address bar slash home and look at the message right here, home works. So this HTML is coming from the home component view template. So when we navigate to slash home, this message is displayed home works. Just to prove that, if we look at the home component view template, which is in this home folder, so here is the view template, home.component.html. So here we have this message, home works, which is what is displayed when we navigate to slash home. Similarly, when we navigate to slash employees, the employees component view template is displayed. Look at the message, employees works, and this is definitely coming from the employees component view template, which is in this folder. So if we look at employees.component.html, we have this message employees works. And we have these two routes configured right here. When we navigate to slash home, the home component view template is displayed. When we navigate to slash employees, the employees component view template is displayed. Now let's try to navigate to slash ABC. We don't have this route configured. So let's press the enter key and see what happens. Look at the message that is displayed. Page not found works. This message is coming from the page not found component view template. Let's actually confirm that. So if we look at this page not found folder, which contains our page not found component, here is the view template and look at the message page not found works. So this components view template is displayed anytime we try to navigate to a route that does not exist. Let's look at the routes that we have in our root module file. So the route that we have right here is slash ABC. So ABC does not match with the first route home. So it checks the second route. It also doesn't match with that route. And then it comes to the third route. It does not match with the empty route. So it falls back to this wild card route. And that's the reason why we see page not found component view template displayed. Now, when we remove the client side portion of the URL altogether, notice we don't have anything here, slash ABC, slash home, slash employees, etc. 
So here we only have the server side URL localhost colon 4200. The client side path is basically empty. So this route matches the empty route that we have right here. So in this case we want to redirect the user to slash home meaning the home component view template must be displayed. Now let's see what's going to happen when we press the enter key. First of all notice the URL it's automatically changed to slash home and we see the home component view template as expected. Though routing is working we have to manually type the URL in the address bar. Instead let's include links to our home and employee routes. Let's do this within our root component which is our app component. I'm going to replace this router outlet with another piece of HTML. This is very straightforward. We have a div element here and on the div element we are applying 5 pixels padding and then inside that we have an unordered list, a break element and the router outlet. We already discussed we use this router outlet directive to specify where we want the router components view template to be displayed. And then on the unordered list we are using these two bootstrap CSS classes nav, nav tabs. Basically we are using bootstrap nav component to create the navigation menu. If you're new to bootstrap please check out our bootstrap tutorial. And then to create this navigation menu inside this unordered list we have two list items. And then on the list item here we're using the router link active directive. We'll discuss this directive in just a bit. Before that let's discuss this anchor element. So this anchor element is going to display this navigation menu item home. And then on the anchor element we are using this router link directive. This router link directive tells the angular router where to navigate when we click on this link. So when we click home we want the router to navigate to home route. Similarly, when we click on the employees link, we want the Angular router to navigate to employees route. Now, this router link directive applies this active CSS class when its route matches the active route. So what is active route? Active route is the route which is active in the browser. So when the user navigates to slash home, at the moment home route is active. So the router link active directive is going to apply the active class only to this list item. So the home tab appears selected. Similarly, if we navigate to slash employees, then the active route is slash employees. So the active class will be applied on this list item. So the employees link appears selected. So let's save these changes because the web server is running in watch mode. It's going to automatically compile and then it's going to reload our web browser. And notice at the moment we don't have a navigation menu because we don't have the bootstrap installed. There are several ways to install bootstrap. One way is by using npm. Let's first shut the server down by pressing Control c and then y to confirm. To install bootstrap execute this command npm install bootstrap dash dash save. We can install bootstrap from the command prompt or we can do that directly from Visual Studio Code by using the integrated terminal. To get to integrated terminal click on view and then select this option integrated terminal. Once you have the integrated terminal window open execute the same command npm install bootstrap dash dash save and then press the enter key. There we go. Bootstrap is successfully installed. It's actually installed in this node modules folder. So within this folder we'll find a folder called Bootstrap. Now to get this working we'll have to reference the Bootstrap style sheet within the Angular CLI configuration file. The Angular CLI configuration file is right here .angular-cli.json. So within this file get to this styles section and then include a reference to the bootstrap style sheet. We know the bootstrap style sheet is in the bootstrap folder in the node modules folder and that's the path to that. So let's save these changes and launch our application. There we go. We have the navigation menu. At the moment we are on the home route and we see the home component view template right here and the home link appears selected. When I click on the employees link the URL changes to employees, the employees component view template is displayed and the employees link appears selected. Now if we try to navigate to a route that does not exist, in this case ABC does not exist, 
and look at the view component template that is displayed page not found and none of the links appears selected and when we try to navigate to the root of the URL so when the client side portion of the URL is empty it matches our empty path route so it's automatically redirected to the home route notice the URL slash home again we have the home component view template and we have the home link selected so here is our fifth step tie the routes to the application menu to tie the routes to the application menu we are making use of this router link directive this directive tells the angular router where to navigate when the respective anchor elements are clicked next we have this router link active directive this directive adds or removes the active CSS class so the user knows the page he is on in the application if the corresponding route is active the router link active directive adds the active CSS class if the corresponding route becomes inactive the directive removes the active CSS class this directive can be applied on the link element itself or its parent in this example for the active route styling to work correctly router link active directive must be applied on the parent li element and not the anchor element itself finally we have the router outlet directive this directive specifies the location where we want the routed component view template to be displayed all these routing directives are provided by the angular router module which we have imported in our root application module app module at the moment all our routing code is in our root module app module so if we look at the file app.module.ts which contains our root module notice all the routing code is in this file here is the code to import router module we are configuring our routes right here and we are also letting the angular router know about our configured routes using the for root method right here so at the moment we have all of our routing implemented in the root module however for separation of concerns and for the other reasons that we will discuss in a later video routing should actually be implemented in a separate routing module and then import that routing module in the app module in a later video we'll discuss how to move routing into its own routing module as we have seen throughout this video there are many moving parts that we have to remember to implement routing correctly in our angular application in our next video we will discuss the routing workflow and how routing actually works by connecting all these little moving parts thank you for listening and have a great day